Dr. Murray, you are charged in count one of this felony. He's unconscious. He's not breathing. Yes, he's not breathing, sir. You did unlawfully and without malice kill Michael Joseph Jackson, a human being. Did anybody witness what happened? No, just the doctor, sir. The doctor's been the only one here. In unlawful manner. I told the truth. It's all BS. Dr. Murray's a fall guy. This offense is called involuntary manslaughter. Something he's pumping the chest, but he's not responding to anything. The maximum penalty for this offense is four years in state prison. Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. I am an innocent man. I therefore plead not guilty. Also with us is Dimitri Gorin, a great criminal defense attorney here in Los Angeles. Uh, Dimitri, how about uh, the fact of the way Conrad Murray's being portrayed here in this case? A cleanup, a cover-up. You never like that, right? Because that shows, and the, there could be an instruction to the jury about this, consciousness of guilt. Why is he doing this? Because he's got a guilty conscience. He wants to, he knows he's done something wrong. How does the defense deal with that? It's a very challenging uh, position the defense is in right now. Remember, the defense has really not had an opportunity to present its evidence. Um, I would think one of the reasons why people in that house, as well as Dr. Murray, were tentative with contacting 911 or law enforcement was to kind of keep a lid on this. Maybe Mr. Jackson could have been revived. Maybe the world doesn't need to know about Mr. Jackson's medical condition. Maybe at that time they still thought, hey, this, you know, he can be revived, things can improve. And I think as time went along and went on, it became obvious that he needed some emergency treatment. And that's when the emergency treatment got there. I think they have to portray Dr. Murray, and I think this is going to come out later on in the case, that he cares about his patients, that he cared about Mr. Jackson. He was friends with Mr. Jackson. So at this point, it does seem damning, but remember, the defense has not had an opportunity to respond. They have not had a chance to put on their case, put on their character witnesses, and really show what kind of doctor Dr. Murray really was. If he was such a bad doctor, such an uncaring doctor, I don't think the Michael Jackson camp would have hired him as, as a personal physician. That's so, a great point. That's I a great right. argument to make. Why would Michael Jackson hire a doctor who was not competent? That's a fantastic argument. Every single one of them. I was here for the full preliminary hearing. I've been here for all the pretrial hearings. This is what I do. I work for Michael Jackson now. We support Dr. Conrad here. He's an outstanding doctor. We believe when the facts fall, he will be exonerated. We don't know what he took or what he was doing. But when Michael Jackson didn't have a doctor near him, he self-medicated. Michael well, Jackson was exactly, murdered by Conrad Murray. Exactly, he went against his Hippocratic exactly Oath. He's a damn fool. He's going that's down. Exactly he's here. a murderer. Conrad Murray is a murderer. Absolute madness outside the courthouse. Long lines for the public lottery. Michael Jackson fans uh, having uh, spirited debates and arguments with Dr. Conrad Murray supporters and the daily arrivals of the Jackson family. Will any of this uh, impact what's happening inside the courtroom? Dimitri Gorin's with us. Uh, Dimitri, do you think, uh, and let's talk about the Jacksons first of all. Janet Jackson, uh, Catherine, Joe Jackson, Latoya, Jermaine, do these folks uh, being inside that courtroom impact this jury, Dimitri? Um, remember, the jury is instructed to uh, just focus on the evidence to keep the emotion out of their deliberations. All right, we know that, but you can uh, tell us what really happens, Dimitri. Tell us what really I, happens. I've, absolutely. I've tried a number of murder trials, both as a prosecutor here in Los Angeles and a defense attorney. Uh, absolutely, there is an impact uh, of having the jury see the victim's family. Absolutely. Uh, but also, remember, they're going to hear the other side. They're going to hear Dr. Murray's side, where um, he's going to have his patients that are going to testify that he saved their life uh, in the defense side. So, yes, I, I believe it will have an impact. But ultimately, my experience in speaking to jurors after verdicts is they really try to be fair. They really, in their deliberation, take their job very seriously and consider the evidence. And assuming the, def the defense lawyers know what they're doing, and I think they do, 
um, they will respond to that kind of emotional presence of having the victim's family in court uh, through, through presenting their case, through putting on character witnesses, and by addressing the emotional aspect of the case in their argument.